Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael Piroman. This morning, Amazon announced it has selected Long Island City, Queens, and the Crystal City neighborhood of Arlington, Virginia, as the locations for the company's new headquarters. It was just over a year ago that the e-commerce giant announced it would open a second corporate headquarters, commonly referred to as HQ2. In its press release, the company said it will invest $5 billion and create more than 50,000 jobs on HQ2, which it has now decided to divide into two separate headquarters. In reaction to the decision, Governor Andrew Cuomo said that with the average salary of $150,000 per year, which the company will be paying its tens of thousands of new employees, Amazon will be creating economic opportunity and investments in Queens that will, quote, flourish for the entire region. So now that the rumors have been confirmed, what will this all mean for Long Island City and its surrounding neighborhoods, and what will it mean for all of us here in New York? I sat down with Amy Plitt, the editor for Curb New York, who has been following this story, and I began our conversation by asking her if the company's decision to divide HQ2 into two separate offices diminishes the value or cachet of the Long Island City location. Yeah, you know, there have been some critics who have said that um, Amazon launched this whole search. They made this a big deal that cities were vying for. Cities were renaming themselves and pitching <laughs> yeah. all of these ridiculous things to get Amazon to come there. And ultimately, they're ending up with two almost satellite offices. Yeah. Um, so it's not quite as big of a deal, I think, as it was originally pitched to be. But it's still going to be incredibly transformative. It's still going to be huge, and we'll yeah. talk about that. By the way, talking about now, my, my next question is, what did the city have to give, have to offer to get the folks at Amazon over mm -hmm. here? I, I know that Governor Governor Cuomo offered to na rename himself Amazon Cuomo. Amazon Cuomo. <laughs> so, so tell us, what do we, what is New York City, what is Long Island City, what mm -hmm. is New York State, get in return for whatever it is that we offered Amazon? What are the benefits of having HQ2 divided by two? Uh, here yeah, in so Amazon has pitched it's HQ, or HQ2, I should say, as a big jobs generator. It would bring 25,000 jobs to New York City, um, which is a pretty big impact. Yeah. Uh, it has said in Seattle, where it has its corporate headquarters, which I guess we're calling that HQ1, uh, that it's added billions of dollars to the economy because you have workers there, you have people who are building their offices, you have all of these different ways that money is being brought back into the community. Mm -hmm. So that's Amazon's pitch. You know, we'll bring money and jobs to your city if you give us land and subsidies and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, what are the downsides? Um, so I think it's hard to say what the downsides will be, but if you look at what has happened in Seattle where housing prices have gone up astronomically, mm. right. um, the lack of affordable housing has contributed to a huge homelessness crisis in that area. Um, well, 25,000 people is going to have an impact on the housing, no matter absolutely. how you slice it. Yeah, and 25,000 people on the infrastructure in Long Island City, even if all of them right. don't live there, I mean, you're still going to have people coming in and out, you know, taking the subway, which, as we all know, is right. a mess. The transportation, um, I mean, the only really line that goes from Long Island City to Manhattan is the 7 train. Yeah, right I mean, you have the W. And it's already, and it's already overwhelmed. It is. It's overwhelmed. Um, the signal modernization along the 7 line was supposed to be completed by the end of the year, which would, in theory, make things a little bit better because you could run more trains. But just a couple more trains. Yeah, just a couple more trains. Um, the reliability would hopefully be a little bit better. But again, like you're talking about thousands of people on a train that's already really crushed for space. And, and what about the other infrastructure? I mean, you know, you talk from sewage. Mm -hmm. To schools. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the city had announced just a couple of weeks ago that it's investing an additional $180 million to improve the infrastructure in Long Island City. It was a very well-timed announcement, perhaps suspiciously well-timed. Um, but, you know, part of that is going to be improving the sewer system and improving resiliency measures because Long Island City is also on the waterfront and very vulnerable to the yeah. effects of climate change. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, it's also going to bring a new school into the area around Court Square, but that's just one new school. Um, so the city is putting money into the neighborhood to hopefully address all of these problems, but there is still the question of if it's I mean, and clearly it's going to affect more than just Long Island City. It's going to mm -hmm. affect Astoria. It's going to affect Sunnyside. It's probably going to go up to Woodside. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and maybe Queens will finally be gentrified, something that uh, people have been saying for, for decades. Yeah, I lived in Astoria in 2004, and at that point, people were saying, you know, Astoria's going to gentrify yeah, any day right. now, and it yeah. hasn't, it's still yeah. affordable. I lived in Woodside for 18 years. Yeah. I kept hearing that for the whole time. So, but, you know, 
finally, how will it change New York City itself? I mean, do you know, we want it to be a high tech hub. Mm -hmm. I guess this will make it so. But do we really want to be Silicon Valley East? Do we really want to be San Francisco East? The city really wants that. Um, you know, there was the rezoning that happened earlier this year for the tech hub at Union Square that's going to be this innovation center um, with a bunch of, you know, different offerings for people who want to learn more about being involved in the tech industry. And you're seeing, you know, these innovation centers, if you want to call them that, going to different parts of the city. One is going to be opening in Red Hook. You've got Cornell Tech on Roosevelt Island just across the river from Long Island City. So I know the city definitely wants to bolster its reputation as a place for tech workers and that kind of Silicon Alley rather than Silicon Valley. Uh. But, you know, you do have to wonder what is this going to mean yeah. for the neighborhoods outside of Long Island City that might see this ripple effect in housing prices going up or the infrastructure. Thank you so much for doing it. Thanks for having me.